Hey, this is Dr. Buzz with Buckeye Physical Medicine and Rehab. BuckeyePMR.com's website. Check it out. All the old radio shows are on there and some cool podcasts. But uh, I'm here today with Dr. Cooper. Hey, what's up, Dr. Cooper? Not much. How are you doing? Uh, good, good. Uh, so Dr. Co Cooper is uh, from Neuro Radiance. And Dr. Cooper uh, specializes in concussions and brain injuries. Yeah, treating them. Yeah, and uh, I got introduced to Dr. Cooper because Dr. Cooper treats uh, several NFL athletes at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, uh, in the NFL, concussions is a pretty big deal, which we're going to talk about that today. But concussions aren't just for NFL players; they're for you know middle school, high school athletes. Um, it's a, it's really a big thing, and I think now that that we know the repercussions of it, it, it's becoming more of a big thing. And so it's very important to number one uh, understand, especially if you have children. Uh, you know how to identify the symptoms of this right and, and and even more importantly there are some treatment options now in the past there really wasn't options and, and you're doing some really uh, innovative stuff I'm excited to talk about today so yeah right that's the the biggest thing that's happened in the last sort of three to five years with respect to concussions and brain injuries is now you can treat it and you can actually get you can get better and you, you see it more like a broken arm than yet than a hopeless situation that that dooms you forever yeah it's not that way anymore yeah, so I'm going to cut the break and we're going to come back and we have a lot of information to share. So if you or anyone that you love has ever had a concussion or has a risk of it, I want you to listen to the show. We'll be right back. Okay. Hey, this is Dr. Buzz with Buckeye Physical Medicine and Rehab. BuckeyePMR.com is a website. Check it out. I'm here today with Dr. Cooper and we're talking about brain injuries and concussions. And, uh, and, and uh, he's right here in Columbus with Neuro Radiance is the name of his practice, and they specialize and treat brain injuries and concussions. That's what you guys do. Yeah. Uh, or that's what you do, I should say. Um, I'm going to kind of start off, I mean, you got into this, just like a lot of people, how I got into my thing, because you had your own issue. Yeah, so I had um, three traumatic brain injuries that um, left me unable to practice medicine at one point. And so... How did those happen? Like, what happened to you? Um, one was a heat stroke my core body temperature got up to 108 after a triathlon and then I got uh, hit while cycling by a drunk driver in a truck and then uh, several years after that I, I got meningitis and so those last two I was uh, in comas both times and had to recover and learn how to walk and talk and eat and all that kind of stuff again wow. and got better um, but then as life went on started getting worse and going downhill and having all kinds of problems that I couldn't solve. And then uh, we're on radio, so like, you know, uh, so what type of physician are you, what, what, primarily, what, what were you doing before you got into this? Uh, internal, internal medicine and uh, radiology. Okay, and then uh, at what age did all this stuff happen to you? Like when? Yeah, so it actually happened in my uh, 20s and 30s, mm -hmm. and then I didn't start going downhill or, and sort of be unable to cope with it until my 40s. Okay, and what, and what, what does that mean? Like, so explain that, because you know, you're, you're, you're a successful physician, I know your wife's a physician, you have a practice, uh, you're a healthy guy, uh -huh. you, you leave them out where you appear healthy, like what, what started happening, explain. Yeah, so brain injuries are very interesting things and they're very different than any other kind of illness or injury that you get because you have a strange mixture of symptoms and a strange mixture of function and dysfunction. So, for example, I had all kinds of problems sleeping and I had what we call brain fog. I couldn't think clearly. I could do some stuff and I could work, but it would take me 12, 14 hours to finish an eight hour day. I couldn't multitask very well. I could do the tasks that I was um, assigned to do, but I couldn't do more than that. And it took a great deal of effort just to get through the day. So I was always tired and always sort of felt like I wasn't thinking clearly and had a lot of difficulty in the mornings with um, just basically being awake. Um, and getting to the point where you can function. Um, and what age was this? Like, when did you start having these symptoms? About 35. Okay. About 35. And did you, like, what was your first thought? Did you think that was kind of... Yeah, you know, at first, like so many of my patients, I thought it was me. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them, that's what happens, is you think that it's just you and you're not sort of bucking up enough or, or you're getting soft or anything like that. Um, you don't necessarily realize that it's a brain injury problem. Mm -hmm. um, and it, because it's you're you're not able to do some things, but you're perfectly able to do other things. Right. Um, memory is another thing that goes. Um, a lot of times, short-term memory will go, but you'll still have good memory of things in the remote past. Um, and those kinds of things eventually add up and accumulate to the point where you can't really function, and eventually you lose that battle, no matter how hard you try or what effort you put forth. So this is progressive. Yeah, it's a slowly progressive kind of down downward spiral that um, that you go through and you try to I haven't met anybody yet who hasn't tried to compensate with their own intellect and their own 
sort of efforts, um, but it doesn't it doesn't work ultimately. A brain injury is a brain injury, and you got to do something to try to help it, or it'll keep going downhill. I gotcha. So, at what point did you realize, hey, this is a problem? I gotta, this is not normal. When it started, once I got to the point of 12 to 14 hours to finish a normal day, um, it was that was too much, and I was doing it, but I couldn't I couldn't keep it up. And it would take me all weekend just to recover to be good enough to get back for for Monday. And so eventually, I decided that uh, I needed to stop practicing. And when I did, I, I went out and looked for looked for help. So you actually st- you could weren't, weren't unable to be a physician. Yeah, I couldn't I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do all the things that I had to do during a day successfully. Um, right. There was just too much. So I went up to Cleveland Clinic to try to get help, and looked into all kinds of things for for brain injuries. Along the way, I would figured out that that that's what I thought it was, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to other things, and my sort of uh, interaction with traditional medicine was extremely dissatisfying. Um, I ended up getting sent to a psychiatrist because they decided that I was fine and it was really kind of all in my head, right. which I have a lot of patients that have that same Well, the way they, the same the way they diagnose you with depression or yeah. ADHD yeah. or what are you? Uh, no, mostly depression. They just said, oh. oh, well, you're actually okay. You're just depressed and so you need medication and that wasn't it at all. Um, and that, that led me to start looking for different things and alternative care and integrative care methods to get myself better because it was clear that traditional medicine wasn't going to do it. Yeah, I think, uh, unfortunately, at least my take on it, because, you know, uh, the symptoms of depression uh, mimic low hormone levels or mimic brain injuries, and, and depression is so misoften diagnosed. And, right. and people, there's so many people out there on de- depression medications that don't need the medications. Yeah, that's exactly right. And they're, they're part and parcel. You're um, exactly right about the, the hormone deficiencies come with the brain injuries, too. So you have more than one thing going on when you have brain injury. Yeah. So, uh, so, so they wanted to put you on depression medications. You knew, knew that wasn't it. What happened? Like, where'd you go from there? During my fellowship, I had some exposure to a laser center in Boston, and in Colorado is where the the two people that have the patent for the for brain injury treatments with a with laser technology. Um, that's that's where they they practice, and I'm sort of from there and went to medical school there. So I had these sort of uh, I had these lines of communication. You're lucky though, that, that, more right. people don't have this. Right, and so I ended up. Leaving, leaving Columbus and going out to Colorado for, for three months and being a patient um, and going through all the treatments and all the things that they had and all their protocol. And in the process, not only did I get better, but I learned what they were doing. And it didn't take long after that for me to kind of decide that I wanted to provide the same kind of thing to brain injury patients that, that I was fortunate enough to have. Wow, wow. So uh, you, you, you mentioned laser. So you know, I think most people, when you say laser, think of like maybe laser from Star Wars or a laser pointer type of thing. Like what's, I mean, this laser yeah, obviously. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Very different kind of laser. It's a soft <laughs> laser. It's um, in, whenever I give presentations, I always have a slide that has a, the picture of James Bond and Goldfinger with the laser going up between his legs as if he's going to be done in by, uh, by Goldfinger and then this. In, in injuries. Uh, the way I like to explain it, it's kind of like a plant light. You know, we all know that if you want a plant to grow or hydroponics, you put a plant light in there, and, and it's the wavelength that that light is that stimulates the cells of the plant to grow faster. Right, that's exactly right. Uh, we're not plants, unfortunately, because uh, a plant light is a lot cheaper. <laughs> I think my <laughs> yeah, that would make like it $50, a lot. $50,000, I don't know what you're right. you know, They're expensive. But, but, but these, these, these lasers transmit at a wavelength that stimulate our own cells. Right, and we've known for years and years that the that all the cells of the human body can convert light energy to chemical energy. That's something that's very well known and we all get suntans and everything else. But for the brain, you had to have enough advances in the laser technology to be able to find that right kind of light that could penetrate the bone and still have an effect on the brain tissue. And that's that's what near infrared light is. Because the, the, just to be clear, because you're the expert here, so if someone has a, uh, a, a concussion to brain injury, right? Absolutely. So, and it doesn't matter how, I mean, what are the signs and symptoms of a concussion? Because there's a lot of parents that listen to this show. So how would I know as a parent, or e- even to myself, that I or someone I love had a concussion? What are the signs? Yeah, so sometimes it's headache, sometimes it's simple things like a headache or um, uh, sleeping too much, not sleeping at all. A lot of times it's subtle stuff like changes in your personality or inability to focus, no attention, can't, uh, can't complete tasks that you would normally be able to, to complete not answering questions, forgetting things, um, every lots of things like that, lots of subtle signs that you that you sort of the the parents will often say, well, I can tell he's not he's not my son, he's not his usual self, um, mm-hmm. but they'll have a hard time putting their finger on it. But it's always things like that. So so if they're in a game and your kid gets hit in the head, you know whether it's soccer, baseball, football, whatever, what are the signs as a parent? You know, I know coaches are trained on, but as a parent, I want to have some level of control. What would you be looking for? Right, so you're gonna you're gonna talk to them and look them straight in the eyes and see if they follow your 
um, follow your eyesight and can focus on you and concentrate with uh, to what you're saying and answer your questions, which are usually simple questions. Um, a lot of people will try doing eye tests and sort of visual stimuli to see if they're tracking and things like that. Um, but most of the time, it really has more to do with the cognitive stuff. The, the things that are off are the way the person is thinking about it, the way they're answering questions, the way that they're um, interacting with other people. You can also tell from balance and coordination is a big thing that goes off kind of right away. Um, they won't walk, they won't be able to walk a straight line and they won't be able to sort of stay steady. And, and when that happens, there's brain damage. Right, you know right then. And, and when we say brain damage, that's a, what we know now is that that's a, a transient reversible thing. We don't say brain damage like we used to when, we, when someone had a stroke and we thought brain damage, that was it. Mm -hmm. That there was no recovery and that you couldn't get any better. Nowadays, we know that that concussion is a brain injury. It's like a little brain bruise. But a brain bruise can be treated and can be helped and cured just like um, other injuries. So, so if my child or myself has a concussion and I don't treat it, is it there forever? Yeah, so the thing is, it, it will, um, it depends a lot on how many concussions and what the prior history of the person is. But yeah, one, one concussion, sometimes people will be able to get over it over time, um, but it'll have lingering effects. And most of the time, you get more than one or you have a lingering problem, and that's when things will start to go downhill. You, if the brain injury is left to itself, the brain will try to reroute around the brain bruise and try to compensate for it as best as can. But and it's still we want to think of this as a bruise then. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're still you can route around the bruise, but you still have the bruise. And then, uh, and what you're saying now is now there's technology available that no matter what age or when the concussion happened, there's the potential to heal this bruise. Right. And that's the one of the strange things about the the laser that's that's really quite uh, remarkable is the ability to heal these injuries years, decades after the original injury. Um, a little brain bruise will become a little scar that you can a, a lot of times see on an MRI. Um, and the fact that it's there, the brain will go ahead and compensate around and do its and do its thing. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the bruise and the scar is there. But you can you can fix it. You can heal it. And if you give the brain the energy that it, uh, it gets from the near infrared light. The brain will know exactly exactly what to do, and we'll start the healing process right away. Yeah, Just yeah. like with a musculoskeletal injury or a knee or you know shoulders. Right, right. It makes total sense. You know, and, and just so you know, uh, Dr. Cooper, you you treat. We're not going to mention any names. Uh, this is a huge problem with the NFL, and I know you work with several NFL athletes. That's how we got introduced. Uh, so this is a real thing. Yeah. You know, that this is not right, and and the NFL guys are doing great. You know, the thing about it is they they really really suffer from their from their injuries, but you get them better, and they're back. Um, and yeah, that's the most satisfying part of seeing people um, recover and seeing them get better and seeing them get their life back on track and be the way that they were before the brain injury or before the series of concussions for the NFL guys. That's amazing. And then um, is there any age that, I mean, is this appropriate for any age? Yeah. So we've treated everybody from 12 to 80. Um, we haven't gone younger than 12, but there's no reason, there's no reason not to. There, there isn't any contraindication. The, the near infrared light, when push comes to shove, is just near infrared light. Mm -hmm. There's no, it doesn't cause any. But is there no discomfort effects. with the treatment, or? Nope. It's kind of a warm, uh, soft feeling that you get on your on your scalp as the transducer, is, which is sort of like ultrasound, the way that it's applied. Um, but right there, there isn't any discomfort. It doesn't cause any problems. Um, that's kind of one of the beautiful parts about the patent is that you can actually treat and, and get the you actually get the person better. And what's a, a typical, so like, you know, so basically what happens with flow? So if you, if you are, or someone you think has a concussion, what would you recommend? What's step one? Step one is if you've had a baseline test, um, then you're, then you're set for that. If, if not, then you're going to do, um, it's basically sort of a modified uh, physical exam. You're going to do a series of tests that, that check your balance, your coordination, your uh, ability to think your sort of cognitive thought process. This is something you do at your office. Right, okay. right. And so you, the first thing that happens is you get that test to find out where the person's at. Um, and then along with the clinical and physical exam and stuff, then you go ahead and you start treating them right away. Um, because you can get people better with you know, three, five treatments, and they can be better and back completely good within a matter of a week or two as opposed to a month or two. Is there a difference uh, from your experience if the sooner you come into the concussion, the quicker the recovery, or that doesn't matter? Um, it only matters once you get beyond a decade. Once you get, as long as you're within a few years, it doesn't, it doesn't change. You're, the faster, the closer to the concussion or the injury, the faster the person will get better. 
um, but within a within a, a pretty wide range, the person's going to get better no matter what. Okay. And is there an eight? I mean, do younger people heal quicker than older people? How much you're seeing? Because yeah. I know you have a little bit. You know. Yeah, I would say generally they um, they really do. They they're more likely to, to have a fewer number of treatments and be right back to where they were before they before the injury. And how do you know you just test them after every treatment and you kind of? Yeah, and the that's another thing that I really like about it is the patient will tell you. The patient knows. They will. Um, they can tell the changes in themselves and the way that they're thinking, whether it's you know sleep, headaches thought processes, whatever it is, um, they are the first to come and say, hey, I'm, I'm better. And then when you test them, sure enough, they don't have the problems anymore. So yeah, there's so no it's problem. one of those things you don't know you're messed up until you're fixed. Right, <laughs> right, right. And then they look back and say, geez, I was really, you know, I really couldn't do stuff. And it's kind of like hormones. I, you, I always say with hormones, you don't realize how bad you feel until you feel right. Right, until you get those shots and yeah, you're yeah, actually and better. Then, yeah. And then once you're better, like, okay, that's the one I'm supposed to feel. So right, it sounds exactly like right. that, that's the same way. So, uh, so these are these are treatments. So basically, they would come to your office, and I know uh, we had talked. We're gonna we're gonna partner up and have a, an aggressive program with a lot of the local schools. You recommend really the best way as a parent to protect your children is to have your kids tested before the season even starts. And there's a simple I don't know if you can explain that on the radio, like a simple test you can do preseason right, to get so tested out. And then if you think they have a concussion, they did a simple test they do afterwards right. that that's really accurate. Maybe explain that. Right. So we use something called a Huber 360, which is a a European uh, piece of technology that tests balance and coordination as well as strength and um, conditioning, but it also uses cognitive things. So you're a, it's, there's a little bit of sort of virtual reality mixed into the test, but it's an automated test that you take um, on a platform that moves and then you have to work on your balance and coordination and try to stay, a, stay within the platform. What really drives it is the person gets better and the parents know it and the kid knows it and the coach knows it and that's how you get where you're, where you're trying to go. Because because if if someone has a concussion, it can affect the rest of their lives. Like even you know. Yeah, and that's the sad thing is that I can't tell you how many patients I have that have been in sort of what are considered minor car accidents that will have a brain injury, but they were checked out at the scene and they were okay, and so they'll go on in life and then can't figure out why they're having all these problems, and that's that's why they'll have an undiagnosed brain injury. Well, I think there's I mean I think the reason they've gone undiagnosed is number one there's no medication to fix it, there's no money, and right. there's no there's no treatment. Yeah. So if we yeah, can't. Right. Unfortunately, with healthcare in our country, if there's not a treatment, we kind of just don't worry about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and that's what just like what happened to me. The the, the traditional doctors don't have a lot of things that, to offer. They can guide you through it and explain and tell you that yes, those symptoms are related to a brain injury, but then the treatment part is where it kind of falls. Um, so they diagnose, hey, you have a brain injury, but but right, exactly. But we don't really have things to do other than have you keep taking these tests or try some physical therapy or things like that. And they're just kind of trying different things. They don't really have have a set treatment that works. Wow, that's crazy. And, and, uh, how, and you're getting quite a name for yourself, too. So, so what's happening, I think, is, is you know, you're treating these NFL guys, they're telling their friends. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to think what percentage of NFL players probably have concussions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, that, that one study that came out about a year and a half ago that showed just about 99% of the patients that were, um, that had had the autopsy studies had the CTE from, from football, which is akin to the concussions in real life. Um, it's it's almost impossible not to get them when right. you're when you're at that level when you're sort of focused at that level. And what other sports? I mean, soccer is probably one I would imagine. So women's, yeah, we have more. Um, I have as many women's soccer pa patients as I do NFL guys. Um, there's a, a lot of concussions at the in, in soccer. Um, football, of course, is sort of number one. Um, hockey is a big one, and so is a, a fair amount for lacrosse too. Is another one that where people get dinged pretty often. Wow. And would you say your patient base is mostly adults, children? Would you a little bit of both? Yeah, it's a good mixture of, um, I'd say mostly, sort of mid to young adults, and then uh, high schoolers. There's a lot of high schoolers. They they really there really are a lot of uh, injuries that happen then that you can fix, um, that can get better. But but it happens a lot. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so if you're a parent listening, how would I find how would I find your place? Like what what's the next? Yeah, so the first, uh, the easiest thing to do is just give us a call. Um, we are at, so it's NeuroRadiance Integrative Health, and the phone number is 614-776-0624. Um, we also have a website that's uh, neuroradiance.org, um, but giving us a call and getting the process started is really the thing. We see people right away, um, and I usually spend about, the, the first consultation with everybody is usually about an hour. Um, one of the nice things about the laser treatments and the way that the protocol works is that I can uh, spend a lot of time with the patient. Um, right. I get the chance to spend significant time with them, much more than most most doctors, so I really get to know the patients, and that makes a big difference. 
Wow, that's crazy. That, that's really good stuff. And, and I think we've been working together. Another thing we, we're seeing with these concussion people and in in, in older people, when I say older, even in their 20s and 30s, is when someone has these traumatic brain injuries, it also wreaks havoc on their endocrine system and their hormonal system. Yeah, absolutely. The pituitary gland is very easily injured and uh, can cause a lot of problems with, with hormonal changes and cortisol and everything. Yeah, and, the, and once again, the same symptoms, depression, right. inability. I mean, like it's... Right, and you almost part and parcel do the two things together. Yeah. You know, you treat the concussion and get the get the blood checked and see where the where the hormone levels are because you can fix those. What would you say? What percentage of people that have uh, brain injuries end up with hormonal issues? If you, if you, if yeah, it'd be around eighty percent. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, but, but I mean, I mean, I just wonder how many people are out there that have these that are diagnosed with depression or kids in school where they have ADHD or depression. Like it, it's scary to think of the consequences of this and in the in the misdiagnosis. Yeah, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that you had me on today is um, I'm I'm really trying to uh, get out there and, and let those people know that there's a that there's a solution and there's a way to help them. Um, there's a lot of people that are in that same situation that uh, where you can really do some good now that that uh, you used to not be able to help those. So so brain injuries are you can heal these things. Period. Yeah, yeah, and and um, like I said, it's see, drug free, right? No discomfort whatsoever. Right, you don't have to worry about the the laser treatments have never caused any kind of serious injury, they don't cause stroke, they don't cause, you don't have problems with it, they don't, um, it's not that kind of a treatment. Um, it's all healing and restoration. That's amazing, that's amazing. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here today. Do you have any final advice for anyone? So if you're listening to the show, you know, the, the symptoms once again are gonna be, you know, his inability to get stuff done, tired, tired and lack of mental focus. You know, and, and there's also, and I don't know what your thoughts on this, I've, I've heard that, that these untreated can lead to Parkinson's and other brain it, Right, we now see, yeah, we now see brain injuries as a spectrum from a little concussion or brain bruise to Alzheimer's disease. If you get enough of them and they go untreated for long enough, um, that's the sort of natural progression is to go um, downhill with a degenerative brain disease. And if there was one message that I would give, um, the main thing that I would say is that there's hope. There, there, it's, it's a different world now, and you can treat those things that... Um, Previously, you thought you really couldn't do anything about. And you're living proof. Yeah, you I practice absolutely. what you preach, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's absolutely. the best way to do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Dr. Cooper, thanks for coming on. Once again, the name of your, your facility? Uh, Neural Radiance Integrative Health. Okay, and you can check you out, you're online, I'm assuming, also? Yeah, yeah. the website, website is neuroradiance.org, um, and then phone number. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, and uh, I hope you guys all listen. Until next time.